Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be logging yet another entry into the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia by examining the Baku Baku no Mi. The Baku Baku no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to eat essentially everything in the known world, with the notable exception of sea stone. The consumed items can then be fused with the user's body to create a whole host of new forms depending on what was devoured. The fruit itself was eaten by Wapol and first put on display during the Drum Island arc. Sadly, the etymology for this fruit isn't quite as clear as most, as Baku can mean a wide array of things, but with devil fruits, it's usually best to look for the onomatopoeia first, of which Baku is one, but it is quite specifically used for the sound of sheet metal being struck, which may play into things as Wapol is quite a metallic-based character. And furthermore, it does bear some similarity to the sound of eating, which is Paku. However, it is also entirely likely that the name of the fruit may come from the Japanese phrase Baku Baku Tabeteru, which is a phrase that pragmatically translates to chowing down, or if you're Australian, getting stuck into it. Also of note is that Baku can refer to a mythological Chinese chimera, which was known to devour nightmares. All very potentially appropriate sources of inspiration for the name of this fruit. Sadly, the English translation is nowhere near as beautiful as Japanese, and all three of our major translation sources being Viz, Funimation, and 4Kids elected to call it the Munch Munch Fruit, which doesn't quite have the same mystique about it, but hey, it gets the job done, I guess. Moving into the abilities of the fruit though, it first needs to be addressed that the power to eat quite literally anything is completely insane in every way, shape, and form. It means that aside from sea stone, there is no substance in the world that would ever be able to contain you, as you can simply nom your way out of any situation. Not only that, but the fruit comes with the bonus ability that allows the user to stretch their mouth to the size of seemingly whatever they want to eat. Whether or not there is a limit to this stretching is currently unknown, but at the very least it grants the user a mouth wide enough to consume even the largest objects in a time efficient manner. And I feel like it's very important to highlight the time efficiency aspect because we have had cases of people in the real world with an appetite for eating various objects, like airplanes for example. The most famous of which is Michel Lotito, who ate this plane, a Cessna 150, and doesn't it look doubtlessly delicious? However, it took Michel two years to completely devour the plane, whereas the user of the Baku Baku no Mi would be able to do that in less than two minutes. And furthermore, they'd be able to transform into the plane afterwards. Which brings us to our next absurd ability granted by this fruit, the fact that the user can incorporate whatever they've eaten into their own body. Now, I thought that the Baku Baku no Mi was a decent fruit before coming to this, but this secondary skill gives the user of this fruit quite literally limitless possibilities abilities for what they can mold their body into. The most common usage we've seen in the series thus far is eating a weapon and then having that weapon pop out of the user's body ready for use. And that can be escalated to anything and everything. But the truly crazy thing is that the user can combine various objects they've eaten into a whole new creation. So for example, if the user were to eat a bunch of cannons as well as a house, then they could turn themselves into a fortress. You could also do a similar thing by eating a gun and a car and then bam, all of a sudden you're a tank. Or you could even season your car and gun with some diamonds and then become a diamond tank. The possibilities are literally endless. I cannot stress that enough. Although there is a limitation on how long the user is able to access forms of consumed objects, which is a rather reasonable 24 hours. I say reasonable because if the user had permanent access to their consumptions, then this fruit would just be plain broken. However, I assume the logic behind this time limit is due to the fact that inevitably, the user will be forced to go to the bathroom and uh, pass their eatings. But I think it's very important at this stage to note that the user of the Baku Baku no Mi does not necessarily have to incorporate their nommings into their own body. The user of the fruit is entirely capable of eating two separate things and respawning them as an entirely new entity through the use of the Baku Baku factory feature. And very interestingly, this factory can not only be used to combine two objects, but also living things. The best example of which we've seen in the series is when Wapol ate both Chess and Marimo in order to fuse them into Chess Marimo, which is a very Dragon Ball-esque type fusion, whereby the new being retains both former voices. Although unlike Dragon Dragon Ball, this fusion does not result in an exponential burst of newfound power, but it should more accurately be considered a reconfiguring of two beings in order to take advantage of the most positive aspects of both. Although Chess Marimo is uh, probably not a good example of this. But with all of these amazing powers, I think it's finally time for a negative aspect of the Baku Baku no Mi, which is that it renders the user perpetually hungry. And this is quite a huge curse actually, because your quality of life would drop significantly. It's essentially like being inflicted with a hard core addiction. The user of this fruit would either 
have to be eating or thinking about what to eat next almost 24-7. That's a pretty severe debilitation, and even though Wapol seems to cope with it alright, I feel like this is one of the worst drawbacks we've seen a Devil Fruit inflict in the series. Although speaking of Mr. Wapol, let's take some time to examine exactly how he makes particular use of the Baku Baku no Mi. And essentially, this fruit is entirely wasted on him. Wapol is a very uncreative creature who prefers to use his brain as little as possible, and as a result, the way he uses his Devil Fruit is very much in the fashion of an idiot improvising pathetically with his surroundings. Arguably the greatest thing he has done with the Baku Baku no Mi was by using it to create a brand new metal, known as Wapo Metal. But even this was entirely unintentional. Essentially, after being defeated on Drum Island, Wapo was destitute and began eating garbage, which led to the accidental creation of some toys, as well as the new metal, which skyrocketed Wapo back into the wealthy elite. And I think that just goes to show the sheer power of the Baku Baku no Mi. If the King of Morons can use it to become a wealthy leader of his own nation, then just think what could be done if this fruit were in the hands of a competent person. I should say that Wapol does have one somewhat interesting use of the fruit in which he eats himself, which results in him becoming a much slimmer form of himself. It's an interesting idea, but it really does make me wonder at which point one considers the possibility of eating themselves. Huh. In regards to the awakening of the Baku Baku no Mi, it's a bit of a weird one to think about. It's one of the more unconventional Paramecia types, so I feel like any awakening this fruit is capable of won't really fit what we know of as the standard Paramecia awakening. However, if it did follow the known trend, then one possibility may be that the user is able to create mouths out of the environment around him that can swallow objects and living things and then incorporate them into the landscape in a similar manner to what the user does with their own body. Or perhaps the user could eat something with their own mouth and then fuse it with the landscape around them something like that. But once again, I feel like this is one of those fruits that wouldn't necessarily follow convention and would result in some insane idea that only Oda could ever conceive. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a voracious eating human. The Baku Baku no Mi may be one of the rare devil fruits that creates a bit of a loophole in the theory that a person can only consume a single devil fruit. The idea comes from movie 9 where Wapol ate his non-canon older brother Mishuru who was also a devil fruit user, forming a new being that has the power of two fruits. I'll stress that this is 100% not canon, but it is a curious idea. Provided you have engaged in enough temporary consumption, in theory the user of the Baku Baku no Mi has access to incredible regenerative abilities. For example, if you were to lose an arm, then you just need to simply replace it with something from your temporary storage system. And even though the arm would disappear after the elapsed 24 hours, I'm sure that by that point your hunger pangs will have driven you to eat a whole host of other things to take its place. So yay, infinite limbs. In summary, this fruit bestows its user with what I can only describe as a god-like power. Even the hardest metals in the world will crumble before your mighty mouth, and what you do with those substances afterwards is very much akin to playing god. Effortlessly creating new beings, or even fusing them into your own body. Really, if it weren't for the 24-hour time limit, this fruit would probably be considered one of the best in the series. However, even with that restriction, as well as the side effect of permanent hunger, this fruit is still nothing short of phenomenal and limited only by the creativity of the user themselves. And with that, we are going to commit the Baku Baku no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, things will be getting quite exciting as we will be examining our very first Zoan type fruit encountered in the series, the Ushi Ushi no Mi Model Bison. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter. The links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Baku Baku no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.